Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at Shape Keys. So this is Glitch. Um, he's in uh, the process of being created and developed for a game that uh, I'm working on. But he has, we're utilizing blend shapes with him quite a, quite a bit. Because Glitch, our default dog, is going to be able to become just about any dog. And uh, using a bunch of different blend shapes, and I'll show one that's obvious. So this is, he's more like a wolf type of dog here. And with this blend shape, now he becomes a Doberman. Okay, and then I would add uh, a, a little bit different change of skeleton, a little bit different to make him look more like a Doberman Pinscher. So that's one example of a blend shape, and that's almost a full body blend shape there. And uh, one another example that um, blend shapes are used for quite a bit are facial expressions. So at the top here we have a few facial expressions like blinking and anger, joy, um, sad. I'm not totally done with all these I just started working on them and then we have some placeholder shape keys that we haven't created that are all going to be expressions for the dog and we have lots of other shape keys for him more of his snout his nose um, if we look at his body we have one for thinner so the dog can get really thin even to the point where his ribs are showing. And we have a muscular one. Kind of make him more bulky, especially up front. But that's uh, a basic example of blend shapes. And I'll kind of show you real quick, too, how we use a combination of blend shapes and uh, changes to the rig that create different options. So here is a default kind of dog size that glitches and then we go to Doberman which is bigger and if we put his blend shape on here we go Doberman then that's closer to a Doberman pincher and he also has another rig that we have an example of and that is a dash hound so he's now he's really small and we haven't created the more for the body yet but there you can see how we're gonna change this one dog into almost any dog and that's an, a good example of how blend shapes are used in different ways in movies and games and all kinds of things so we'll start um, with a cube now so let's you know go from something that's a little bit complex to something real simple if we look on the right hand side the properties tab here the properties window and we go to the data symbol this is a symbol for data we have a, a shape key option so imagine that this is a finished uh, model that we're working on, this cube here. And uh, so we're all done modeling our cube. So the first thing we would do when we want to work on blend shapes is we create its basis. So the first one you add is the basis. Now this is the basis from which all your blend all your um, shape keys are created from and uh, when we're talking about shape keys we're also we're talking about blend shapes or morphs they're all the same thing blend shapes morphs uh, shape keys they're all the same thing uh, different programs just call them different things so we have our basis that we're going to work from and now if we click it again we'll get key shape one Okay, now you can, you can rename this however you want. But let's go into edit mode now while we're selected on this key one. So if we go into edit mode now, we have our normal cube, and let's just pull out one of the vertices here. 
and that's it. Go back into object mode, and now we can up this value and make that blend shape go exactly to where we did in edit mode. Okay, so let's bring that back down. We'll add another one. We'll go into edit mode. Let's grab this other side and now we can move that one out and go back into object mode. So now we have two shape keys. One brings one side out and now we can add in the other one too. So it's two different blend shapes working together. Now we could add another one. Let's just screw around a little and add another one. Go back into edit. And always in edit mode, it'll show you um, the default, the basis. Okay, unless you uncheck this. If you uncheck, or check it, however you want to say that. Uh, if you uncheck it, now you're going to see whatever these are. So if I lower these, I move these around. Now it's it's going to reflect whatever, and then you can you can see how the different blend shapes are working together uh, when you use it like this. But most of the time, you're always going to be starting from your basis. Okay. So now let's add in another um, shape key here, and let's just move those up. See what that does. So now we have those two working. Let's move this one up. And now the whole thing just moves up like that. So it's real neat. And let's say that we have, um, using a few combination of blend shapes, we get something that's really unique. Okay, so instead of having to use all those blend shapes to get there and having to remember that combination or whatever, you can just hit this little down arrow and you have all your different options for how um, you want to create your different blend shapes. So this one says new shape from mix. So if I click that, now our last blend shape, let's get rid of all of these, bring these to zero, which I could have hit that little X there too. So just with that one blend shape, we created that that same mix that we got from another one and we might not even need these other ones now so we could delete them or whatever and you just hit minus to delete something okay so let's clear out our shapes again and what else can we do we can actually transfer I'm not gonna go over most of this stuff we can transfer different shapes from different objects and now uh, just recently blender um, enabled the you to be able to uh, blend from similar shapes. They don't even have to have the same topology. Normally, you the both objects would have to have the exact same topology and um, location of verts to be able to transfer blend shapes from things. Um, but there, there are just so many different ways to use blend shapes. You could use blend shapes to do physics. To simulate physics so you could do a cloth simulation and then turn that into a blend shape so you could fake physics in a game or something like that but let's let's stay focused on our simple task here let's take a look at range down here this is uh, can be used uh, pretty interestingly so let's say I have this vert that comes out okay now I don't like its minimum being at zero let's say I want to go negative one on it so and now instead of it going from zero to one now I can go actually the reverse of what I did just by changing the minimum now in some games they don't um, accept that minimum value so w another thing you can do is this so we're on this blend shape we have it at negative one I can go new shape from mix BAM and now uh, zero them and now when I go in a positive value with this new one that got created 
I'm doing the exact same thing as going negative with this one. So now I can get rid of this negative and I'll have a shape that works in my game. And now you can also, another thing you can do, you can, you can actually sculpt. So let's say I made, um, oops, let's say I made a new shape key. I can go into sculpt mode and actually sculpt up. Um, this cube, of course, this cube is a bad example of that because it only has a few verts. So it's, it's not going to show you too much if I do that. Um, but you can create blend shapes using all the different ways you can adjust your model in Blender. Okay, even using, um, what is that? Um, proportional editing. So if you, you could use proportional editing and like scale up this value so we're bringing more into it so now we have a blend shape that does something crazy like that and there's our blend shape so any way that you can change uh, the vertices or move them around um, will work to create a blend shape now what else do I want to show you? I don't want to get too advanced, but I do want to show you a character. So that's how we'll, that's what we'll do next. Here we have our make human figure here. It's just a guy made up in make human, brought him in as an OBJ. And I made him a little bit smaller and everything to fit this scene. And I'm in orthographic mode, so hitting five so I'm selected on the make human guy and I'm just gonna real quickly show you how you can make a character come alive a little using blend shapes and normally you would want to have your character all rigged and everything you would want to have your final character clothing everything you know and then you would start on doing things like blend shapes so let's imagine we have this final character, he's rigged on everything, and we're selected on him and we create his basis. So this is the basis for all the morphs to work off of. Now we create a second one and I'm just going to make a couple quick expressions. So we'll go with smile first. So just like that we have our smile morph. We'll go into edit. I'm going to use proportional editing to do all this. So I have proportional editing on, and I already have it down kind of low. So I'll just go like that and bring it in or up and out, maybe in a little bit like this, and maybe take this and bring this up a little bit and move all of these out a little bit cheeks get a little puffier when you smile and these kind of move up and in the eyes we tend to move up a little bit too so let's but let's lower that proportional editing let's move some of this up So nothing must be a biker weekend this this weekend. <laughs> so here we have a pretty simple smile. Uh, we could all we could do a lot more with it, of course, but this is just for demonstration. So now we have a smile, and let's just make one more. Make this angry, angry. And I'm not going to get too complicated with this stuff. But angry, of course, your eyebrows are going to come down a bit. Even your eyes will be slightly slanted in there. It's down more. 
bring this down like that. Bring that down and soften that peak. And we'll bring some of this down. It's just a little bit. And maybe the nose kind of pinches up a bit. So just like that, we have a smile and an angry. Of course, I could do a better job on that. But another thing you can do with blend shapes is you can animate them. Now, these animations don't always convert over into game engines and whatnot. But let's hit period and zoom in. perspective okay so here we have our blend shapes oops we have our blend shapes and we'll go to the shape key editor and we have our two blend shapes right there now we could move their value here let's turn this on just for the hell of it but over here we can so let's say we want to start the animation. We're at frame zero. We want to start the animation with both of these having a value of zero. So I can hover over and I can hit I on the keyboard to create a keyframe. Same thing up here. I can hit I and that creates the keyframe there. Or I could hit I here. Okay, so we have our, our keyframe with everything at zero. And now let's let's imagine that I go to frame 50 uh, or 60, and then I'll turn smile all the way up. Now it's not keyframed yet. I still have to hover over it, hit I. Well, or maybe it is because I have that on. Yep. And if you move the timeline, you can see this faint little yellow line for each keyframe. Okay, so let's go to frame 120. We'll turn down this one. And I think it automatically created that. Yep, because I have auto keyframing on. And let's turn angry up. And then, or actually, let's, let's turn it down. So we have two keyframes there. And then we'll go to 180, go angry up, and then we'll go to zero, angry down, and I will keyframe this one just for the hell of it. And we can go here, and I'll keyframe this one just for the hell of it too. Why won't it let me? Anyways. So just like that, we have shape keys animated. And let's go into default so you can kind of see the texturing all working too. And we could probably turn the speed up. But that's a look at um, animations with keyframes and how do you make expressions on characters. Um, I hope everybody learned a little something about shape keys today and have a good one everyone.